It's another semi-cloudy day in London, not surprising. I feel like you can't be in London and not talk about the weather. <laughs> but here we are at White Cube Gallery. We're going to see an exhibition by Tracy Emin. The exhibit's titled Living Under the Hunter's Moon, and this exhibit is perfectly in parallel with a major exhibition by Tracy Emin as well as Edward Munch over at the Royal Academy of the Arts. White Cube is really good at coordinating their shows with the Royal Academy. They did this a while back with Auntie Gormley and it was a really nice, uh, nice show to run in parallel. So if you are over at the Royal Academy of the Arts, which is right around the corner, it's a few blocks away, then you can head over to White Cube and see both shows. I like to think of this exhibit as kind of like the best of, you know, the best of a certain rock and roll artist album. This is the best of Tracy Emin as an artist. You see every single iconic sort of piece of work that she's known for, whether it's her sculptures or her paintings, as you can see here. And in the basement of the exhibit, which we'll go down in a second, we're gonna see her classic neon artworks as well as uh, the thing that really ties this exhibit to what's happening over at the Royal Academy, which is a presentation of her screening of her famous 1998 film, which is titled Homage to Edward Munch and All of My Dead Children. I've spared you guys a little bit of the experience. This film actually contains really intense, high-pitched screams from the artist, which is why it's titled Homage to Edward Munch, because of the scream. And you can hear these just echoing throughout the exhibit. I forget exactly what cadence it runs on, but it's, it's very unsettling. Here's an iconic neon sculpture. If you don't know anything about Tracy Emin, you probably recognize one of these works. And this one says, I made my way to you. still in Mayfair, but we're gonna head up a few blocks to David's Werner to see a Brazilian artist exhibit called Maxwell Alexandre. Maxwell was raised and actually still lives currently in one of Rio de Janeiro's largest favelas, and this has been hugely influential to his work. And if you're not sure what a favela is, you might remember JR did a very famous graffiti job on the sides of these buildings lining this huge mountain in Rio, and those are the favelas.
Maxwell's work, which you can see a little bit of here, is inspired, like I said, by how different forces like the evangelical church, organized crime, and state violence really exert control in the city's favelas. important to him to depict how these forces shape the lives of black individuals living in these favelas. And he wanted to amplify everyday symbols that serve as strength and resilience to this community. We're now heading over to, not the Royal Academy, unfortunately, but to Pace Gallery. We don't have time to go see the Royal Academy. I actually don't think I'm gonna have time at all on this trip, which is a little sad, but here we are at Pace. We are looking at some brand new sculptures by Kevin Francis Gray. Similarly to White Cube, this exhibit is running in parallel with an exhibit of Gray's work at the Museo Stefano Bardini <laughs> in Florence, Italy. You'll notice that galleries do this quite often and it's completely on purpose. I mean, what better way to sell art essentially than to be walking through you know, an exhibition with a collector and say, oh yes, well, their work is currently on view at this museum or revered institution that just solidifies the legitimacy of the work it also makes collectors feel really comfortable in knowing that the trajectory of the artist is going to be maintained and that they're not going to be investing in something that is going to become irrelevant or not be fostered over the course of art history i can talk more about that in uh, another art 101 video but yeah that's that's why galleries tend to do that quite often
I don't think I've been out to see galleries since I've been in London and it not have just gone pitch black on me. <laughs> the sun sets around four o'clock here, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but my last stop of the night is at Massimo Di Carlo. Johannes is a German artist who's actually now represented by the gallery. And his exhibit is on the ground floor as well as the first floor of the gallery. And there's another artist down in the basement. And Johannes' subject matter is usually the human body. And his process involves taking photographs, collecting photographs, and then creating these realistic paintings from them, but with a little bit of distortion in them. And this exhibit is titled Sleep. And it's taken from a series of works that he created in 2019, which were based on photographs that he took in airports around the world. And it's interesting because he's capturing businessmen sleeping, which is particularly significant because normally these would be men that are powerful individuals and he's showing them in a really vulnerable state. The second exhibit is down in the basement by a Chinese-born artist who now, well, has worked in Dijon, France for the last 40 years of his life. And this exhibit is titled The Mourners. This is a self-portrait of the artist who's mourning and experiencing extreme grief at the death of his mother. The works that line the left and the right sides of this gallery are watercolors based upon the 82 mourners from the tombs of the Dukes of Burgundy in Dijon, France. 